I sent you all an email. Check to make sure you got that email yesterday. I said I wanted you to read 2.4. In fact, I've got that doc. This is basically what I sent you. I said I wanted you to read 2.4. Um, go through and do, I think there are like six or seven problems there. And then read one page in chapter 7. 7.1 is just one page. Hopefully you did that. Um, if you did, then a lot of this is going to make a lot more sense. If you didn't, you better go home and do it tonight because that's what the next three sections in about the next five or six days depend on is you understanding that. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the starter questions from this because this is what section 2.4 was about. It was about circles. Okay? What shape is this? If we were to graph it. It's a circle. Okay? It's in standard form. What's the center of the circle? Zero, zero, so it's centered at the origin, and what's the radius? Radius is two, because remember, it's x squared, or x, let's see, I'll write down the whole form. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, right? So h and k here are both zero. r squared is four, so that means r is two, so it would look something like this. And one thing you can do, you can go one, or excuse me, two units in each of the four directions, um, and there's your circle. What's the difference between A and B? Different center, okay? This is centered at, notice where the X is and what's with the X. What's with the X? A negative 2. So what that does is it slows it down by 2. It makes it 2 units later. So that's going to be a positive 2 for the X act, or the X coordinate for the center. And then what does the plus 1 do? Moves it down one. And then again, we're going to go two units in each of the four directions. And we'll just connect these. And there's our line. And if you read that and you think about the notes that we would have gone over for 2.4, circles are pretty easy. In fact, we'll talk about the definition right now. The definition of a circle is the set of points that are equidistant from a given point. So that given point is the center, and that equal distance is the radius. So all you need to know is, where is the circle, where's the center, and how big is the circle? What's the radius? If you know those two pieces of information, you've got the equation of the circle. It's that simple. You have everything you need to make, the, make that circle. Okay. <coughs> What's the distance formula? There we go. Okay. Big square root, and we did x2 minus x1, quantity squared, and then y2 minus y1, quantity squared. Everybody okay with that? Does it matter, y1 minus y2? It doesn't. As long as you're finding the difference between the y's, squaring that, it's going to be positive anyway. It's just the absolute value of the distance squared, if you wanted to think of it that way. Okay. Um, any questions on what you studied in 2.4, the circles that ring a bell? Okay. And there were a couple problems on there that gave you information about the circle, and then you had to go backwards and figure out, well, what do I need? I need the center, and I need the radius. Okay, so you may have had to use the midpoint formula, the distance formula, and stuff like that. John? Um, you know, when you see general form, mm -hmm. pretty much, yep, yep, pretty much, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do some very similar stuff to that by the time we're done today. If not, stop me with a couple minutes left in class and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so this chapter is about something called conic sections. This section in particular is a conic section called a parabola, and you're gonna think, well, big deal. We already know how parabolas work. We're gonna look at them in, in a little bit different light. Um, we're going to look at them from the definition of where a parabola comes from. Not just, well, if you've got an x squared, you've got a parabola. But where does that whole idea come from and how can we make it more useful? Because parabolas that just open up or down, that's not the whole story. That's one specific type of parabola. There are lots of other important parts and important features that allow us to apply what we know about parabolas to more complicated areas like engineering and optics and stuff like that. So there are four conic sections. We already know what the first one is. The first one is a circle. The second one is a parabola. 
Then we've got something called an ellipse. Anybody know what an ellipse is? Squish circle or a common name for it would be an oval. Okay, Don't call it an oval though, call it an ellipse. And the last one is called a hyperbola. Or if you really want to emphasize and sound like a hick, you can say hyperbola. We would get what you're talking about, but nobody else would, and they'd probably make fun of you. Okay? <laughs> so they're called conic sections because of the way they're formed, and hopefully you watched some of these videos. Um, so they have lots of different applications. Um, they're, they're used in navigation. They're used in optics. They're used in satellite dishes. They're used in construction. All sorts of places use um, conic sections. So let's see. I think this one was... Pretty good one. Uh, that's um, that was the best one that I found. Yep. Different language. Okay, so it says something about a double napped cone. So here's the cone right here. Okay, two cones, one standing up right with the point up, and then the other one inverted with the point down. If we cut it like this, you can see this blue cross section right here. Hmm. Yeah, it's just not. There we go. Not even on wireless. Okay. And then it says if you if you slice this cone right there, you just get a point. And then as it goes forward, we're going to take this line. Hopefully you can see it. Well, you can't see it up there, can you? Um, uh, there's a little rectangle. Oops. There's a little rectangle here. If you watch this, it actually shows up. In fact, let me, let me lower the light. Like, let's take a look at stuff this. see if those graphics are better. See if we can see this a little bit better. It's basically saying the same thing. We're going to take this double cone and we're going to take a plane and we're going to slice it. Um, we're going to cut it. I must have downloaded these, so. Again, we'll leave it that way. So there's the double cone. If you just slice it like um, perpendicular to the axis that, ru that runs down the top, you can look at that cross section and it's just a circle. Then they're going to come back here in a second and they're going to take that plane instead of slicing it just perfectly perpendicular to the axis that runs down the center, they're going to tilt that plane just a little bit. So there it is tilted. There's our cross section. And then we'll take a look at the face there, and you can see that that's the shape of a parabola. We'll talk about the definition of a parabola in just a second, and we'll actually derive the formula. Here's for an ellipse. How many of you watched this? Good. About half of you. Good for the half of you, bad for the half that didn't. You do need to go home and watch these, because it really helps solidify the idea. This is what an ellipse looks like. So you'll notice we just tilted a little bit, and then there's the slice that's left over. There's an ellipse. Um, you can do the same thing. You can actually construct these. So I've got a flashlight right here. Um, if you watch a cartoon and somebody turns on a flashlight, what shape would the light look like coming out here if you were, if you were watching it on TV? Yeah, it, it would be a cone, okay? So it would look like a triangle from the side, and there's the, the hyperbola. There are two parts to it because there are two branches of the, the cone. 
and that's what it would look like there. So there's a hyperbola. So we're going to come back here. Um, I've got a flashlight right here. If I were to turn this on, the light comes out in what looks kind of like a triangle from one side if you just looked at it, at it in two dimensions. But if I shined it straight at you, it would be a cone that starts out this size and then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we've got a cone of light that comes out of this. Everybody, that makes sense? Okay, watch what happens if I point it toward the, the board like this. It's a circle, okay? If I tilt it a little bit, what shape is the light now? That's an ellipse. If I tilt it like that, there's a parabola, okay? And this continues to bend around, okay? And kind of curve and continue to curve. Watch what happens if I do this. Okay, so now I'm pointing straight this way. I'm parallel with the board, parallel with the plane that's slicing it. And you'll notice that, remember, we said it was going to be roughly the shape of a triangle or a cone. If you look at a cone from the side, it looks like a triangle. Well, there's a little bit of curvature here because of, the, because of that circular cone. But look what happens the further out we go. It doesn't continue to curve like a parabola does. It just approaches a straight line. Okay? So take a look at those videos. Make sure those you can kind of see those and that it makes sense. Um, and one of the things that's tough about this is when you take a test on this, which you will, um, they may or may not say which conic section you're dealing with. So one thing you've got to be good at is looking at the equation, the equation in general form, or maybe it's in standard form or a nice graph-friendly form. You have to be able to look at the equation and tell what it is. So here are a couple of parabolas. And these are all different equations for a parabola. And I want to point something out. You'll notice I've got a y and an x squared. A y and an x squared. An x and a y squared. An x, a y squared, and a plain old y. An x squared, plain old y, plain old number there. A y squared. Now look at the other ones. x squared and y squared. 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 These three here all have something in common. All three of those have two squared variables. A parabola is very unique. It's the only one with one squared variable. So it's pretty easy to tell by looking at the equation. Okay? But here's a circle, two squared variables. Here's an ellipse, two squared variables. And here are some hyperbolas. All of those have two squared variables. Okay? So I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so we can squeeze these on here. So if the equation has... What am I going to write? If an equation has one squared variable, then what is it? It's parabola. Parabola. You're from Harriman. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. If the equation has two squared variables, then you've got to check something else. So I want you to take a look at the ellipse, or sorry, the circle right here. X squared and Y squared. X squared and Y squared x squared, y squared, negative 2x squared, and negative 2y squared. All of those are circles. Okay, let's take a look at an ellipse. x squared, 2y squared. 4x squared, if you distributed through, 1y squared. 3x squared, 1y squared. This is negative x squared and negative 4y squared. Again, you can figure it out just by looking at the equation. Think about what all of these have in common, what all of these have in common, and then let's take a look at this last one. This is the hyperbola. x squared minus 2y squared. This is an x squared minus a y squared. Negative 3x squared, positive 1y squared. Negative x squared, positive 4y squared. So all three of these, the circle, the ellipse, and the hyperbola, all have two squared variables. But there's a slight difference that drastically changes the shape that's made from those equations. What did you notice about all the ones that had circles? Okay, that, that's what we're after. We have the same coefficient and, so same sign and same coefficient. Then it's going to be, a circle. What did you notice about the ellipse? Okay, same sign, but they have different coefficients. Now, before we fill in this last blank, take a look at the hyperbolas. 
in my opinion, the hyperbola, hyperbola is the next easiest one to tell because all you have to check is the sign. Two squared variables, they have to have different signs. One's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. Okay, So if they have different signs, then it's a hyperbola. Okay? Oh, you're right, I did. Thank you. Okay? So if we're going to check these, here's how you check. You can tell what you're dealing with by how many squared variables, what the coefficients are, and what the sign of the coefficients are. So if it's got only one squared variables, variable, we know for a fact that it's a parabola. If it's got two squared variables, then we check this. I would check first, do they have the same sign? If they do, you know it's going to be circle or an ellipse. If it's not, then you know it's got, a got to be a hyperbola. If they have different signs, it's got to be a hyperbola. And then if they do have the same sign, you check and see, do they have the same coefficient, the exact same coefficient, or do they have different signs? Now again, this is assuming, is everybody listening? This is assuming that we put all the squared variables on one side. Okay, You've got to make sure that all the squared variables are on one side because you can change the sign of the coefficient by moving it from one side of the equal sign to the other. So let's take a look at these, and we're just going to put a P, a C, an E, or an H for parabola, circle, hyperbola, or ellipse. Let's take a look at this one. What's this? What is it? It is a circle. Okay, Two squared variables. Same sign and same coefficient. Let's take a look at this one. That's going to be hyperbola because they have two squared variables and different signs. How about this one? Parabola because only one squared variable. Ellipse. That one's got to be a parabola. And how about this last one? That's going to be a hyperbola. Okay? So you have to be able to look at it and tell what, you're, what, what, uh, what it's going to produce. Um, that's going to be really helpful for the test. The good news for today is the only thing, the only conic section in this section, in section 7.2, is just parabolas. That's it. Okay. So you can focus just on learning a parabola. Now we're going to start with the definition. If you go back and look at your notes for 2.4 when we talked about circles, we actually derived the equation of a circle from the definition, okay? And it involved the distance formula and that sort of thing. So we're going to do the same thing here. So here's the definition. A parabola is the set of points on a plane that are equidistant from a given point and a given line. From a given point and a given line. The given point is called... Nope, it's called the focus. It's called the focus. Okay, this is something that we didn't talk about before with parabolas, but is a really important feature of a parabola and what, what makes it really useful. Okay, the given line is called this. It's called the directrix. Directrix. So I'm actually going to derive the formula for a very basic parabola. Now, if you looked at the animations... And if you haven't, you better go home and do this so this, this makes sense. Um, we want all the points that are the same distance from this point and this line. So the easiest point to find there is the one that's on the line straight between them. That point is on the parabola. Now again, if you watch the animations, if I were to pick a point over here, it's closer to the line than it is to the, the focus, right? So I'd probably have to move this up just a little bit. Does everybody agree that that distance right here is about the same as that distance right there? And if I came over here, that's really close to the line, pretty far away from the point, pretty far, far away from the focus. So I'd have to put a point about right there. Now take a look. Does that look like it's about the same? So we're going as the crow flies, if you wanted to talk that way, okay, straight to that focus and then straight down the line, down to the line, down to the director, because it looks like that. So we'd have similar points or symmetric points on the other side, and if I were to erase these little lines right here and connect these, this is going to curve around like this and like that, okay? That's how a parabola is made. Again, watch the animations. A couple of those are really pretty good at showing how they're formed. Any questions? Okay.
then watch really closely. Okay, I'm going to call this point right here x, y. That point is on the parabola. If it's on the parabola, then it has to be exactly the same distance from this than it is from that. Now, finding the distance between these two points right here, we just use the distance formula. Let's come down here. How do I find how far it is from that point down to that line right there? It is going to be the same, but I've got to have an equation for that. I've got to be able to find the distance from that point, x, y, to this point down here. Can anybody tell me what the coordinates are of that point? Can you tell me one of the coordinates of that point? One of them is negative a. Which one's negative a? The y is negative a. Can you tell me the other one? Isn't it right in line? Yeah, it is. It's x. Isn't it right in line with this one? Isn't, it, isn't the same distance from the y-axis that this one is? So this is going to be x comma y. So I'm going to call this, just for color coding's sake and keeping this straight, I'm going to call that distance 1, and I'm going to change colors here, and I'm going to call that distance 2. So I'm going to say that distance 1 is equal to, it's a big square root. It would be x minus 0 quantity squared, and it would be y minus a quantity squared. Everybody okay with that? And then let's find the distance between these other two. Big square root, difference in the x-coordinates, x minus x, difference in the y-coordinates, y plus a. y minus minus a would be y plus a. Okay, are there any questions? If you get that, the rest of this is just some fairly simple algebra. Does everybody see how we went from the definition? It's got to be all the points that are the same distance from a given point. We call it the focus and a given line. Does everybody see how I found the distance between x, y and 0, a and x, y and x, negative a? Any questions? Okay, what do I know about these two distances? They have to be equal. So I know that D1 has to equal D2, which means this big square root has to equal that big square root. So I'm going to change colors now. Okay, Don't write this down. This is x squared, am I right? This is y squared minus 2a plus a squared. Good there. And this one would be, what's x minus x? 0. And y plus a quantity squared. That's going to be y squared plus 2a plus a squared. Am I right? Okay, what's the only way these two square roots would be equal? Is if the stuff underneath the square roots was equal. Or, if I were going to solve this and get rid of the square roots, I'd just square both sides. Is that okay? So I'm just going to erase this, and now you can write that down. What's underneath this square root would have to equal what's underneath this square root, and I've just squared everything out there. Yeah. It does. That's correct. Because when you square this, you get negative 2a. Oh, oh, this should be negative 2ay. Sorry about that. Uh, they will be in just a second. I left something off. This is negative 2ay. Good thing I didn't have you write that. And then plus a squared, and this is 2ay. They both got a y on. Okay, I can definitely get rid of the 0 squared, right? Does anybody notice anything else I can get rid of? You can get rid of the y squared. Do you see why there's only one squared variable with a parabola? It comes right from the formula. Now let's start putting things together. Um, I've got an x squared over here, and I've got a, let's see, I'm going to move the 2ay to the other side, so I'm going to add 2ay. Is that okay? And then I've got a plus a squared here and a plus a squared here. I can get rid of that. So that means on this side, I've got 
a how many ay's do I have? We've got four ay. So that means I've got an x squared over here. After that big ugly mess, all I've got there is an x squared, and on this side I've got four ay. Straight from the definition. I've got an equation that describes a parabola that opens up, vertex at the origin. This is the focus in here, and this is the directrix here. So let's describe this. With the point 0a and the directrix y equals negative a, so this is the focus and this is the directrix, We get this equation right there, x squared equals 4ay. This is a parabola that opens up. The vertex is at 0, 0. In other words, it's at the origin. Okay. Blank is the distance from the vertex to the focus and to the directrix. Blank is the distance from the vertex to the focus and to the directrix. How far is it from here to here and from there to here? What is it? Okay, it's it. You're right. It's in the middle. But how far is it? How far down below the x-axis is this line right here? It's a. Isn't this coordinate right here, x comma negative a? Isn't this equation y equals negative a? So how far would it be from here to here? It would be a. And how far is it from zero zero to zero a? How far do you go up to get to zero a? You go a. So A is the distance from the vertex to the focus and from the vertex to the directrix. That's a way of saying the vertex is smack dab in between. It is the midpoint between the directrix and the focus. It's right in the middle. Okay? And then this is important because this is always true of conic sections. The focus will always be inside the curved part of the conic section. So when I say that, you'll notice that what we've got here, here's the curved conic section. All these conic sections have curved parts to them. So here's the curved part of the conic section. It curves around this right here. The focus is always going to be inside the curved part of the conic section. That's true with a, a parabola. It's true with an ellipse. It's true with a hyperbola. All of those are going to have, we call them focuses or foci. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. Lots of details that we didn't know before about a parabola. Let's take a look at this. What would happen if we turned this picture 90 degrees clockwise? So we go 90 degrees clockwise. That means we're going to have a parabola that does something like this. Again, here's the focus. Here's the directrix. Same picture. What are the coordinates here? Very good. A, 0. Used to be 0, A. Now it's A, 0. This line used to be Y equals negative A. What would it be now? Okay. It's going to be X equals negative A. Now, if we switched all the X's for Y's, what do you think happens to this equation? Okay, It's going to switch. So instead of being X squared, we're going to have Y squared. And then this is going to be 4AX. So that would be the resulting equation. Opens which way? Opens to the right. It opens to the side. So if you have a y squared, you have a sideways opening parabola. Now you'll notice there's something else interesting about this. This is not a function. The conic sections, most of them, are not functions. We don't care about that. We study functions for a reason because they're nice and neat. Plug one answer in or one number in, you only get one answer out. Okay? We're now to the level of sophistication where we can handle, you know what? I can see why this might be useful, why sometimes we, want, we want, might want to have a sideways opening parabola. Okay? All right. So we want to graph and label the following equations, and this is what we want to keep in mind. Okay? If it's an x squared, it's either going to open up or down. If it's a y squared, it's either going to open right or left. How do you think we'd make this open down? Put a negative on it. How do you think we'd make this open left? Put a negative in there. Okay? So, 
keep, again, keep in mind, the vertex is at zero, zero, if it looks something like this. The focus is inside the parabola, A units inside the parabola, okay? The directrix is A units outside the parabola, okay, over here. And we want to go ahead and graph these. So I'm going to lower this down, make it big enough that we can graph this. You've got that information staring you in the face, that little box there is the stuff that we need. Okay, remember the equation is x squared equals 4ay. Because x is squared, which way does it open? Either up or down. How do you know for sure that it opens up? Because it's positive. So we know this opens up. Okay, so we're looking for a parabola that's like this. So we've got a vertex at the origin. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out. Well, what's A? Because I want to label the focus and I want to label the directrix. Okay, if x squared equals 8y, then 4a equals 8. So what's A? A is 2. Now that's important because it allows us to figure out the location of the directrix and the location of the focus. So we're expecting this to open up. So I'll actually draw something in here like this. We're expecting it to open up. And we want the focus to be inside here. So it's going to be two units inside. So that's going to be 0, comma 2. And we're expecting the directrix to be out here. y equals negative 2. So here's the focus. Here's the directrix. And this is what the parabola looks like. Any questions? Okay, let's take a look at this one. And we're going to come back to that one in just a second, but let's take a look at this. Which way does this open? Opens right. How do you know it opens to the right? Positive. It's all positive, and y is squared. So we're looking for something that has a vertex at the origin. If 4a is the same as this number right here, what's a? a is 1. So that means you're going to go one unit inside. So that's the focus. The focus would be 1, 0. One unit outside the curved part. So here's the directrix. That's going to be x equals negative 1. Okay, this is important. Remember, a is a distance. Don't say, hey, wait a minute. That's a negative 1 for a. a is just a distance. The distance is always going to be positive. Okay, it's the, 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 the distance we go up, down, left, right, whatever it happens to be. Okay. So there's our directrix. Any questions? Okay. Now time for a fun word. Has anybody seen conic sections before? Nobody? Two people? Okay. So in addition to the vertex, the focus, and the directrix, there's another feature that we want to draw on the, uh, the parabola. It happens to be the line that goes from one side to the other right through the focus. Okay, and it has a funky name. Anybody know what it is? Do you guys remember? It's called the lattice rectum. How could you forget that? Okay, it's called the lattice rectum. Not sure why it's called that. Probably has something to do with uh, Latin or something like that. And uh, yeah, no, not what you're thinking, Albert. Okay, okay. Whose length is four times a? So what this allows us to do, it's a pretty important feature in the long run. It also allows us to very simply graph a very accurate graph of the, the parabola. So in this case, for A, that number right there is how long the lattice rectum is. So from end to end, how long is it? It's 4 in this case. So that means you're going to go half of that distance on either side. So you're going to go up 2 and down 2. That's going to give us a distance of 4 altogether. So this point would be 1, comma, up 2 and 1, comma, down 2. So see how we've got the focus right there at 1, 0. If I go up 2, I'm at 1, 2. If I go down 2, I'm at 1, negative 2. Okay, let's do this one. Hopefully you did this in pencil. Take a good look at the equation, and this is what's kind of cool about this. How long is the lattice rectum? It's whatever this number is right here. It's eight units. Is my picture accurate? It's not. Okay. This is a pretty wide 
parabola. So I need to go 4 over this direction, and I need to go 4 over that direction. So that's what it looks like. That's a more accurate graph with all of the important features labeled. And the endpoints of the lattice rectum would be, listen carefully, please, eyes up here. This is 0, 2. That's where the focus is. You're going to go to the right 4, so 4, 2. And you're going to go to the left 4, so negative 4, 2. Those are all the important features. Are there any questions? Yeah. The lattice rectum? No, you can just draw the endpoints. If you did, maybe make it dotted or something. I normally don't draw it other than to just demonstrate where it is. Good? Okay, but again, they should line up right across the focus. Should line up right across the focus. Notice all three of them have the same Y coordinate. Notice all three of them have the same X coordinate there when it opens to the side. Any questions? Okay, then let's take a look at this one. What's the only thing that's going to change here in comparison with that one right there? Okay, the, yeah, the, the focus is going to change. Notice what we did here. We have an X minus a 2 and a Y plus a 1. What did that do with this? Took the whole circle, everything, center, radius, everything, and slid the entire shape the exact same shape, two units to the right and down one unit, right? So let's take a look at this one. I'm going to take, notice x is squared, so it's either going to open up or down. Notice this is still a positive 8, so it is going to open up, and that's going to be a y plus 1. So where are we going to move the vertex? Right 2 and down 1. So I'm going to go to the right 2 and down 1. So we'd be right here. It opens up, right? Okay. What was A again? A was A was 2. Everybody watch, please. This is the vertex. Okay, I'll blow that up. That's the vertex. I'm going to go up 2 to get to the focus. I'm going to go down 2 to get to the directrix. So this is going to be y equals negative 3. If this point right here was 2 comma negative 1, if I go up to, where's the focus now? 2 comma 1, right? And from the focus, how long is the lattice rectum again? The whole thing is 8, which means how far do you go in each direction? You go 4 in each direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4 over here. One, two, three, four over here. There's what the parabola looks like. I'd label these points right here. We want to label the endpoints of the lattice rectum. What coordinate is going to be the same for all three of these? The y. So that's a one and that's a one. I went four units to the right, six. Four units to the left, negative two. Any questions? You sure? Okay, can I slide this over and do the other one? Okay. Which way does this open? Opens right. Where's the vertex? Okay, everybody watch, please. Need your eyes up here. People make this mistake all the time, and they make it with all the conic sections. They get used to looking at whatever's first and thinking that's always an X, and whatever's second, they think that's always a Y. Find the X. Figure out what's with the x. What's with the x? A positive 3. So which way does it move it? Left 3. So that's going to be negative 3 and positive 1. So we're going to go back 3 and up 1. There's our vertex. What's a? a is 1. So we're going to go 1 unit. That's going to be the focus. We're going to go 1 unit. That's where the directrix is. And then how long is the lattice rectum altogether? Four. So how far do you go in each direction? Just two. So we're going to go up two, and we're going to go down two. That's what the graph looks like. Make that kind of fat. And then we're going to label those points. Negative two, one. 
negative 2 something and negative 2 something. If I went up 2, I'm at 3. And if I go down 2, I'm at negative 1. Where was the vertex again? We probably ought to label that. Negative 3, 1. And the directrix? X equals altogether negative, negative 4. Okay, now let's stop and pause there for just a second. Are there any questions? Make sense so far? Okay, so I'm going to shrink this back down. We're going to flip the page over. And we're going to sum up what we just learned. If you've got x minus h quantity squared and then a number in front of, so notice that it's always factored. You always have to pull that out front. So that's a plain old y plus or minus a number. Where would the vertex be? h comma k. Opposite of whatever is with the x, opposite of whatever is with the y. Opens, let's see, up if it's 4a and down if it's negative 4a. So if it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. So if x is squared, it opens either up or down. Positive open up, negative open down. Careful here. Take a good look. It's still hk because we always put the h with the x and the k with the y. Again, please don't make this mistake. Every year I teach this. Somebody does this on a test. They just blindly go through and find, oh, it's going to be k and h. It's not. Find what's with the x. Find what's with the y. Okay, opens right if it's positive 4a, left if it's negative 4a. Okay, now if you really wanted to, um, this is a copy of what's in the textbook. They go through and they say, okay, if it looks like this, okay, here's where the directrix would be, here's where the focus is and all that sort of stuff. If you really want to go through and memorize something like that, be my guest. I think it's a heck of a lot easier to think which variable is squared and is it positive or negative, and that will tell you whether it opens up, down, right, or left. Okay, hold on one second. Find the equation of the parabola given the following pieces of information. So we've covered enough that you could get started on the assignment, at least look at it, maybe do a couple problems. I'm going to spend most of tomorrow finishing explaining parabolas. If you understand those really well, the others are a lot easier. So please don't think, oh, we'll just wait till we get to something else. You really need to understand these in order to know how those other ones work. So could we come up with an equation for one that has a vertex at 0, 0 and has a focus at 0, 3? There's the vertex. Where's the focus? Up here. If you know this is the vertex and that's the focus, they always wrap around the focus. They're always inside the curved part. Opens up. That tells you two things. What does it tell you? Positive and x is squared. So this would be x minus 0 quantity squared. And this is going to be y minus 0. Can somebody tell me? Don't say out loud. Think for a second. Can somebody tell me what number goes here? I got one hand up. Anybody else? Two? Three? Alvord, what is it? It's 12. How do you know? That distance right there is three. You can't forget that. The distance from the vertex to the focus and the vertex to the directrix is A. So if A is three, that's got to be a positive 12. Okay? All right, we're going to pick up right there tomorrow. Have a great day. If you've got questions on the test or something else, come see me. Other than that, have a great day.